think the first thing we should do is to remove the confusion because there are different types of IP, right? Mm -hmm. Different types of intellectual property. There's copyright, there's patents, there's trademarks, there's industrial designs, there's know-how, and they're all different and they protect different things and they protect them differently. So mm -hmm. what I protected for my dad was copyright because it's content, it's the song, it's music, right? And with, with, with copyright, you can also protect images, photographs, software, videos, things like that. I, like the, 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 the easiest way to explain it is content. Right, mm -hmm. that that is being protected for how a certain idea is expressed, right? Uh, how a certain song is written, how a book is written, and so on. Trademarks are different. Trademarks are all about brands. So when you go to when you go to a supermarket and uh, you 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 want to buy toothpaste, right? It's the same glop, but. Mm -hmm in the same tube the only difference is the name that you see on the tube and that's the function of a trademark is to allow the public to tell products and services of one company from identical or similar products and services of everyone else Welcome to Biz Help For You, the show that saves you the expensive learning curve by providing advice from industry experts in every facet of the entrepreneurial journey. Too many small businesses collapse. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 20% fail within their first year, and less than 35% make it to their 10th anniversary. The goal of this podcast is to change that statistic. So if you're interested in learning more to be a successful entrepreneur, tune in today. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. Andre Minkov, the founder and CEO of Trademark Factory, has built an impressive career in the intellectual property field, driven by a personal incident when his father, the renowned Russian composer Mark Minkov, had his music stolen by a radio station for an unauthorized ad for Samsung. Over nearly three decades, Andre has leveraged his expertise to assist a diverse clientele, including tech giants such as Apple, Google, and Facebook, along with notable figures like J.K. Rowling in safeguarding their intellectual property rights. In 2013, he established Trademark Factory, a unique firm that provides trademark registration services with a guaranteed outcome and budget certainty. You can gain invaluable insights from Andre's experience and innovative approach to intellectual property protection. So, Andre, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here with you today. Thank you. So before I get into questions I have on the topic, I'd love for you sharing your story with us about how you became involved in the intellectual property protection arena. Yeah, well, part of it you sort of highlighted already. Yeah, it all started with my dad back when I was still living in Russia and attending my first law school. Uh, and uh, Really, back in the day, I had no desire to be a lawyer. I didn't see myself as a lawyer. I, I thought it was just uh, really boring and, uh, you know, did, 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 didn't see any fun in this until one day I come home from, from school and I see my dad is absolutely furious. And I asked him what happened and said, well, uh, we caught this radio station that used the song that I actually used to sing with him on stage when I was like eight years old. And uh, they, they made that into an ad for Samsung without his permission. So he called them and said, you guys can't take my music and use it as you please. And uh, they told him to sit down, shut up and be happy that they were making him and his music even more famous. And uh, if you knew my dad, you'd know right away it was the wrong thing to say to him. And uh, so he got absolutely furious and uh, he said, okay, I'll see you in court. He slammed down the phone. And the next thought that traveled through his brain was Russia just, just transitioned from so Soviet copyright laws, which really didn't protect anything to more or less international free market copyright laws. The problem is there were no lawyers uh, who knew that those new rules. So he came to me and asked me, hey, can, can you help me with this? And I knew absolutely nothing about intellectual property or copyright or what to do in a courtroom. And uh, there was the, to, to make things worse, like there was no Google 
where you mm-hmm. could just go and say, hey, how do you see a ri- Russian radio station that stole your father's music? You, you have to look at books and libraries and things like that. But yeah, I've always admired him and I've always wanted to gain his approval. So I said, sure, let's figure it out. And uh, long story short, I had to take this case all the way up to the second highest court in the nation. Um, took me two plus years and uh, eventually we won. And um, in the process, I got so passionate about helping people who created something that only exists because they created it, uh, protect, protect it, because I, I strongly believe that people who bring to the world something that other people want to use and admire deserve to not have it stolen from them. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the, 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 the early beginnings of it. I always say, you know, my dad was my first and favorite client and, um, from there, everything else started. Like I joined the big law firm, uh, the biggest actually law firm in the world that, uh, gave me an opportunity to work with all those big clients that you name, like Apple, Google, J.K. Rowling, and, 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 and so on. And then, you know, seven, you know, seven, yes, I realized that I had enough of Russia and I left, I left for Canada and, um, assuming that this is going to be the country where I'll, I'll, I'll see a capitalist paradise because when you live in Russia, you assume that everything outside of Russia is capitalist paradise. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I had to go back to law school in Canada from the very beginning Did my three more years of law school became a lawyer in Canada. And, uh, then, um, I decided to start on my own. Well, my decision was sort of forced because I sent out a bunch of resumes to all the law firms in Canada. And despite me having finished up with my class, I got a grand total of zero offers. So uh, that's how I discovered Rob Kiyosaki and uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad and uh, decided to take things into my own hands and become entrepreneurial. And uh, so started tr- my transitioning from, from just being a lawyer to uh, being someone who helps the world use legal services in a way that nobody else could offer to them, which, which is how Trademark Factory was born. So that's kind of uh, the, 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 the story in a nutshell. Thanks. Well, I think a lot of times people don't really understand all of the rights that people have when they create something because they think, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to add some music to a reel now, right? Because so many people are using social media or I'm just going to use this information, you know, to share and they don't understand all of the rules. So I think it's one thing if you approach someone and say, by the way, this is mine and it's copyrighted or trademarked or whatever, and you're not supposed to use it that way without a license or something. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then they make up for it versus the experience like your dad had where it's like, so sorry, you know, but not sorry, right? Like, (laughs) forget it, you know, you have to deal with it. So I don't know if you want to even touch on that to maybe explain to the listeners before we even start talking about how to trademark, you know, like how can you find out if you can use something or not? And, And then what do you do if you want to actually make sure you're giving the person who created it what they deserve for that? Okay, I think the first thing we should do is to remove the confusion because there are different types of IP, right? Mm-hmm. Different types of intellectual property. There's copyright, there's patents, there's trademarks, there's industrial designs, there's know-how, and they're all different. And they protect different things and they protect them differently. So mm-hmm. what I protected for my dad was copyright because it's content, it's the song, it's music, right? And with with, with copyright, you can also protect images, photographs, software, videos, things like that. I, like the, 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 the easiest way to explain it is content, right? Mm-hmm. That That is being protected for how a certain idea is expressed, right? Uh, how a certain song is written, how a book is written and so on. Trademarks are different. Trademarks are all about brands. So when you go to... When you go to a supermarket and uh, you want to buy toothpaste, right? It's the same glop, but mm-hmm. in the same tube. The only difference is the name that you see on the tube, and that's the function of a trademark: is to allow the public to tell products and services of one company from identical or similar products and services of everyone else, 
right? So copying there is very different from you taking the song and using it in, in your Insta, Insta reel. Uh, mm-hmm. And since I mentioned patents, with patents, pets are all about inventions. So if you come up with a genius idea for a new product or a new method of doing something, that might be patentable. Uh, patents are extremely hard to get. They're extremely long to get. Uh, so unless you're a genius inventor, most likely you don't have anything patentable, but who knows? That's what uh, the patenting companies are for. Uh, and really the first thing you do is you you check whether what you've created is even patentable, All right? So mm-hmm. to, to answer the actual question you, you, you asked me, uh, how do you tell? Well, uh, there, there, there are several layers of what you can do. With trademarks specifically, you can run well, I always recommend, hey, start with a Google search. Just see if anyone mm-hmm. in your industry does something similar under the same name. It's not going to be a perfect trademark search. It will be very far from a perfect trademark search, but it'll be something. And if you see, if you like the the the, the point of do-it-yourself search is to uh, find the low-hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. Basically, if you see something that's super, super similar most likely you want to go back to the drawing board and come up with something else. But if you didn't see anything similar, it doesn't mean that it's not there. And uh, that's when you can do layer two, when there there are several websites out there, you can go to the, uh, if you're in the US, USPTO's website, you can go to CPOs for Canada's website. There are some third party websites that offer free trademark search and uh, just run it through the trademark database. Same idea. You're probably not going to find all the things and you're probably not going to find all the right things. But if you see something that's too close, again, gives you a pretty good idea not to not to go in that direction. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if you don't see anything, that's when professionals like us can come into play to confirm for you that, hey, what you've actually come up with is a trademarkable brand. Right. right, and and really that that's that's the, that's the conversation we have with a lot of our like really with thousands of our clients is that uh, it, the ownership, your ability to own a trademark on a brand, is a lot more important than uh, you trying to get a trademark on whatever acute idea that you have uh, in mind because. Like this is something my one of our clients said at best. He said, if you're married to a brand you can't have, get a divorce, right? Because no matter how cute and how smart your brand or your, your idea for the brand is, if someone already owns it, if it's not something you can own, it's it's not just worthless for you, it's dangerous because mm-hmm. if your business succeeds, as you go out there on the market, you're just attracting trouble. When when you're so small that nobody notices you, you can get away with pretty much anything. The second mm-hmm. uh, the second lawyers that see that you have money in your pockets from using someone else's brand, that's when you start getting those demand letters. That's when you start getting drawn into court because uh, mm-hmm. again, nobody wants to sue someone with no money because right. the money has no the point. lawyers need to make money. It has to come from someone. Right. It Mm -hmm. either comes from the defendant or it comes from the plaintiff and Mm -hmm. uh, plaintiffs. If they're small businesses, usually don't like paying the lawyers. Well, duh. So what typically happens is they wait and see if that defendant ends up making it big. And when they do, that's when they get slapped with a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So other than like brand recognition, which, you know, you talked about like the toothpaste example, right? You know, like what are some of the benefits though for actually trademarking your brand and how can that help them continue to grow their business? So it's kind of a two part question. The first part is why I have a brand at all. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back to this in a second, but the second part of it is why trademark it. And I'm going to start with the second part. The reason you want to trademark your brand is because without a registered trademark, you don't own your brand. In fact, you don't have a brand. What you have is a wish to have a certain word, phrase, or an image to be recognized as your brand. 
But that doesn't happen until you can legally go after your competitor who's using a similar brand and tell them, ah, 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 you can't do that. That's mine, right? You have, <laughs> you have until you have the legal right to stop them from copying you. You don't have a. It's not a brand. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like I said. It's it's a wish list, and the right. only way to get that legal right recognized is by registering that trademark, right? So that's kind of the second part of the of, of your question. The first part is what you know. Why why do we come up with brands? And really, that's one of the first things people do. Right, entrepreneurs do. They come, we first we come up with a genius idea. Hey, I'm going to do this business, and then usually you're like, okay, how how am I going to call it, right? And there's there's usually a reason why we come up with this idea or that idea. There's there there, there are a few reasons for a brand. One uh, for a tr or for trademarking a brand. One is that with a trademark, it minimizes the risk of someone else trademarking your brand first and forcing <laughs> you out of your own brand, which is always painful. Uh, right. It's very emotional and it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. And if you're an entrepreneur trying to grow a business, the last thing you need is a distraction like this, because unless you're, you know, a eight, nine figure company where you just have a team of lawyers on retainer, you don't even uh, pay attention to what they're doing, you're going to get involved in this. And, uh, your ability to lead a business is going to suffer. The the second <laughs> benefit is uh, your ability to stop your competitors from copying you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, if you send a demand letter to someone who's using a brand similar to yours without owning a trademark, guess what's going to happen? They're going to show it to their lawyer. The lawyer is going to check, hey, did, did, did they uh, trademark their brand? And if the answer to that is no, the lawyer is going to say something very logical that most people don't realize. He's going to say, these guys hadn't bothered to spend a little bit of money to trademark their brand. Do you really mm -hmm. think they're going to spend a lot of money taking you to court over this? Right. right. And uh, what they're going to do is they're going to wait. Uh, so they're going to ignore that demand letter. They're going to wait for the for the lawsuit that almost never happens. And uh, if you do have a registered trademark and you send that demand letter, they're going to show their the, the letter to their lawyer. The lawyer is going to check that, hey, these guys actually do have a trademark. And he's going to tell them, you can't win this case. You have mm -hmm. to figure out a way to, to quickly and painlessly get out of this situation, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, change your name, do whatever it is they're, they're asking you for. Maybe, you know, minimize the, the, the damage, but like it's something you cannot win. Uh, right. And that's that's the second big reason. The third big reason is with a registered trademark, your brand becomes your asset that you can own forever, right? It's something you can license, something you can franchise, something you can uh, sell, something something that becomes, like I said, something you can put on your books. Because imagine trying to set up a franchise and you don't even own the name. Mm -hmm. Like who's who in their right mind is going to buy a franchise from you like the reason mcdonald's charges over a million dollars for a franchise is because they own all of their ip if mm -hmm. anyone could set up a burger joint and call it mcdonald's nobody would be paying mcdonald's a million dollars for it so uh that's 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 the uh that's another benefit and going back to the, the benefits of brands yeah you're right you know, the brand recognition makes it a lot easier to attract new customers uh, makes it a lot easier for them to remember you. Uh, one of the first things my kids learned to say uh, when we were dri driving by, you know, driving on the streets, the first things they actually kept saying, they, were, they would point to a sign on the road and like, hey, that's Ikea, that's McDonald's, that's this. That's, they, 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 they recognize it when they're so young. Do you think Adults don't remember that. Of course they do, mm -hmm. right? That's how you choose your toothpaste. What was the last time? So, Candy, what was the last time you changed the brand of your toothpaste? Like you actually went to the grocery store or, <laughs> or convenience store or supermarket? Like, what brand of toothpaste am I going to try today? Like, mm -hmm. well, it's funny because my husband is more particular than I am, so he picks it out. You know, in that case. But, you know, you're tr it's right. You know, like you're saying, you have your favorites, whether you think it's yeah. the same or different, you might have your favorites. So it makes sense.
Yeah. Same for ketchups, teas, mm -hmm. coffees, what, whatever phones, you know, all, all of that stuff. That's that's the part of the brand, right? You they they you they know that you know them, makes it a lot easier for them to sell to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, right. so minimizes the cost of client acquisition, minimizes mm -hmm. the cost of talent acquisition. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you are a software developer uh, and uh, you get an offer from Google and you get an offer from a startup no one's ever heard of, mm -hmm. uh, probably it's going to take the startup more money to have you work for them. Right. Um, simply because having Google on your resume means more than a nameless startup, right? Mm -hmm. And and all, all of those things are very, very important if you're trying to grow a successful business. Mm -hmm. So if someone's listening and they're saying, okay, I understand the concept. I want to protect, you know, what I have, um, but I'm afraid of how much it's going to cost me. And, you know, do I have to do like my logo and a tagline? And, you know, like, so can you talk about maybe what they should do, especially like maybe a priority of what they should do? And then like, what is a typical cost maybe to trademark something? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because there's kind of two layers to that as well you, you can probably tell i love layers <laughs> um <laughs> because it's not just about what brand elements it's also where because mm -hmm. trademarks are done on a per country basis mm -hmm. uh, there's no such thing as a global trademark and so it always becomes uh, a question of the budget and I've yet to meet a client with an unlimited budget, right? And again, mm -hmm. I've done work for some of the biggest names out there. They still have budgets, right? So um, it's just their their budgets are slightly bigger than you know the 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 the, the, the typical solo entrepreneurs or you know small businesses budgets. Uh, but so th there are a few things you can trademark. So let's start there. Um, you're there typically five main things you can look into. One is the name of the business, name of the company, or your personal name if you are the, the brand, like Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or Dan Lok or whatever. Uh, or like Drumio, like that's one of the trademarks we've done. Like I'm, 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 I'm a drummer, you can probably tell it by some of the stuff hanging behind me. Mm -hmm. And so we did their trademark when they were just starting out. Uh, that's the name of the company. Um, then you can trademark if you're selling physical products names of your products if they're different from the name of the company like mcdonald's would be the name of the company big mac would be the name of the product uh and uh third third type is names of your services uh and uh mac cafe or itunes for apple right um or dramio like they, they have now, they started as a drum drum uh, education company. Now they also have piano, as piano and uh, Singio and things like that. But they're, they're all owned by one company, Muzora now, right? Uh, so names of your services uh, that are also worth trademarking. Uh, four would be logos. If you actually have a logo that people remember, uh, remember what I said about, you know, my, my kids seeing that mm -hmm. sign on, on, on the road. If you have a, a logo like that, by all means, you got to trademark that. If you are, a you know, two man accounting firm in Cleveland, Ohio, probably the logo is less important to you because that's not really what people remember you by. Mm -hmm. But if you are H and R block, right, then, then. It is important because, again, this is this is brand recognition. And last one is uh, taglines, as you said. So the taglines is if you pick uh, – taglines are funny because basically you're trying to get a monopoly on your marketing because uh, mm -hmm. that's what taglines usually are. Right? If you come up with something, a phrase that you see converts a lot of people that they want to buy from you uh, – probably a good idea to own it like you know, just do it for nike uh means quite a lot because mm -hmm. who else can take a 30 cent white t-shirt slap three words on it uh slap the swoosh on it and sell it for 50 bucks you know that's 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 the power of the brand so uh that's that's in terms of what usually i recommend starting with names 
And the, the most, really, really look at it this way. Uh, prioritize your brand elements in the order of which one it would hurt you the most to lose. Mm -hmm. Right? It is painful. It's something no one wants to think about. Uh, but like, which one would you fight the hardest for if you had to fight for it? Which mm -hmm. one would you say, you know what, I can let this one go. And which one of you would be like, I'm going to fight this till my last dollar. I want, I want to own this. Right. So you sort them like that, uh, from, from top to bottom. And then, then you do two things. One is you look at how much money you're willing to spend on this. Uh, and two, you look at which one, of, which ones of them are even trademarkable because not every, uh, brand idea that we have is trademarkable. Uh, and so. As, as you as, as you uh, get that uh, cleared up uh, that's that that's what can guide your decisions about trademarking and really with with trademark factory what we've done is we uh, offer uh, people who, who are interested in protecting their brands a, conver a free conversation with our strategy advisors and that's exactly what they do they have this conversation <laughs> about the the story about why they're building a business who what does the business, what, where do they want to be? Uh, and then they can actually help them assess, uh, you know, what should they start with, what should they should do next. Also for, as I mentioned, for countries, countries are separate. So if you are only in the States, then, well, you need to trademark in the States. But if, I don't know, if you're a Canadian business and you're sell, selling a lot to the States, you also want Canada and US, right? So, mm -hmm. and if you only have money for, I don't know, like four trademarks, then instead of being able to do four in one country, maybe you should do two and two, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, and, 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 and so there's, 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 there's a lot of moving parts here. Uh, and with, with Trademark Factory, I guess the, 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 the biggest benefit that we offer to, to entrepreneurs is that we offer one flat fee that covers everything from start to finish. Uh, mm -hmm. And most, most entrepreneurs underestimate the complexity of the process because there are so many websites out there that promise to register a trademark in five minutes for $47, uh, which is complete and utter mm -hmm. lie. So you asked mm -hmm. me not to swear, and I'm trying to <laughs> hold myself. But uh, the 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 this this is complete bait and switch because what most people don't realize is that trademarking takes a lot of time. It takes about mm -hmm. a year and a half in the U.S. Takes about four years in Canada, about a year in European Union, and so on. And during these months, a lot of it, yes, you're sitting there and waiting, but. A lot of it is you having the back and forth with a trademarks office when they spot something in a trademark application they don't like. It's called an mm -hmm. office action. And uh, this is how a uh, $100 trademark filing often becomes a seven to $10,000 file because that's how they make money. Uh, because when something bad happens, uh, you get a letter from a lawyer saying, you know, your, your trademark got this problem, but don't worry. Don't, don't worry, they say, we're, we have the, 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 the power, they have the, we have the experience to, to respond to this, and we're pretty sure it's going to work out. And that's how you get on their hook, and you pay more and more and more right. and more. So when I looked at, when I saw this back in 2013, when I started Trademark Factory, uh, I, I thought, hey, entrepreneurs, especially smaller guys or gals who are just starting out, who don't have a lot of money, who don't have the luxury of not knowing how much the whole thing is going to cost. They deserve to have an honest uh, option where, yeah, it's going to cost you noticeably more than $47 up front, but you're know, going to know exactly how much the whole thing is going to cost you. And mm -hmm. I put a 100% money back guarantee on top of that. So when you pay and you don't get what you asked for, you can get all your money back. And when's the last time you got a refund from a lawyer? No. Right. <laughs> so is there like a typical cost that they would know, like per country, since you say it's in different countries, like, can you just give like, it's an estimate of this in the United yeah, so States, around, in Canada yeah, so, or wherever? Yeah, it's around 3K, around 3K okay. plus the government fees. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a noticeable, uh, in, in investment, it's not 
nothing. But again, mm -hmm. once you know how much it is, um, you, the question you ask yourself is, am I building a business uh, or am I just having a hobby and, uh, you know, right. and there's nothing wrong with a hobby and a hobby does not need a trademark. But mm -hmm. if you're running a business, if you're building a business, you will have expenses on it, whether it's trademarking, whether it's setting up your company, whether it's hiring a team, whether it's, it's there's, there's always something, right? right. And uh, uh, it, it just needs to be one of those things on your checklist. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And look at it, like I said, as an investment, not just an expense, because it is something that can protect your company in the long run and it's worth it. So, well, I know you said you had where people could call you for like a free consultation. I don't know if you want to talk, you know, in any more detail about an offer, you know, that you want to extend, if there's anything else besides that consult, or if you just want to go into a little bit more detail, what they can expect uh, if they sure. contact you. Yeah, sure. There's two paths. One is if you're not ready and you just want to learn more about trademarks, you can always go to YouTube and search for Trademark Factory. I've published more than a thousand videos. So if you have a question about trademarks, I'm pretty sure I've answered it more than once. Uh, and uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you you think you're ready to have a conversation about the next step. Uh, then you go to trademarkfactory.com and there's going to be a big button for you to request a free call. And uh, what it is, is a free call <laughs> with one of our strategy advisors. Their job is to help you figure out uh, the priorities, help you figure out, you know, what to do, where to do, why to do, uh, and uh, see if you even need a trademark. See if you have a trademark that that's doable. So once you become our client, the the uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a comprehensive trademark search, just to see uh, whether the brand you came up with is trademarkable, because we're not suicidal, right? I don't want to give a hundred percent money back guarantee on something right. that cannot be trademarked. And really, I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest value that we offer, because trademarks, like there's so the rule number one of trademarks is garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if you mm -hmm. file for a trademark that's not trademarkable, you're not going to get a registered trademark. You're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to waste a lot of money. And uh, I don't like to waste time and money, either ours or our clients. That's how we get a 99.3% rate of success. Uh, so really, the, the biggest uh, contributor to that is that we don't, we, we, we tell clients not to file for trademarks that are hopeless, right? Because we have zero interest in in uh, doing this process for them only to give them a refund after, right? right? So our interests are aligned that way. So we see what's what can be done. And if it's, and if it's, if it has a very low chance of success, why bother, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that that's the evaluation that we do. And assuming that the brand is problematic, again, you, you can either get all your money back or you can come up with more options until you find something that will tell you is trademarkable that uh, you can move forward with. Uh, and then uh, we, we, we send it off to the attorneys uh, who draft the application, they file your application. If there's some follow-up, they take care of the follow-up. Uh, and uh, then you get your trademark registration certificate. We actually order your trademark certificate in the physical form. We put it in a custom frame and we mail it to you. Uh, mm. Because I know that um, the there's something magical about that moment when you're holding something tangible in your hands, not just a PDF that right. the trademark office <laughs> sends you, uh, because that's the moment when you realize this is an this is actually a business this is a, this is a real deal i've had dozens of clients tell me that you know when they open our blue shiny envelope with with with, with their frame certificate uh something clicked in their brain and they're like now it's for real mm -hmm. because as entrepreneurs we're always running around trying to you know come up with the next tactic how to make this thing grow but Deep inside, we're like, is this thing actually going to work? <laughs> is, is, like, is, or, 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 you know, will, is this going to grow into something that no one will dare say that, you know, I'm just wasting my time on? Uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. When you get this tangible thing, it gives you confirmation that, you know what? Yeah, it is a real thing. So that's why we do it. Perfect. And, and besides said, the YouTube, and, 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 and sorry, mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned the the, the special offer. Uh, if you mentioned that you came from this this uh, podcast, make sure you do that uh, because the uh, strategy advisors will be able to give you a special deal on that. Perfect. Thanks. So besides the YouTube channel that you mentioned, is there another way if they want to connect with you to find you, whether it's social media, a different you know a website, anything like that that you'd like to share? Um, I mean, we're, we're pretty active on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, I have weeks when I'm very active on Twitter. I have weeks when I'm not active on Twitter. But uh, yeah, YouTube, Instagram, and website are usually the the the, uh, the easiest way to to get a hold of us. Perfect. Well, thank you, Andre, for being a guest on my show and talking on this topic. I think it's important for people to understand the importance of, you know, the protection of their intellectual property. So I appreciate your taking the time to chat with me. Thanks for having me. I hope we uh, created some value for your audience. I believe we did. Thank you. Uh, and to the listener, I hope you enjoy today's topic. And if you want to hear additional information, you can find access to the exclusive content in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in today. Would you please share this episode with those you know and leave a review on your favorite platform? And if you find our show informative, would you consider being a financial sponsor to help me continue my mission to educate business owners? A link is located in the episode description and no amount is too small. I'd really appreciate your support. If you are interested in connecting with our guests and receiving the offer they had to share, a link to our resource page is in the show notes. Finally, if you have any bookkeeping or payroll needs, reach out to us at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.